Right, before we get started, quick unboxing. So this is gonna be our um, second generation rotating screen mount. Um, depending on when you're watching this, we may still be offering both versions. They're very similar, so you can use this video for either version, the installation part of it. So if I just move things off to one side. Um, this is the main difference between the first and second generation. So um, different bolt holding it together. And although you can't really see on here, um, it actually pivots both left and right and up and down. So you'll see that later on in the video. And um, the key thing to note that for both versions, you really cannot move this um, until it's in the car. And that's by design. Let's get the other pieces out. So this piece fits on the back of the screen. It uses the bolts that come out from the um, existing plastic cowl on the, um, on the Model 3 or Model Y screen. This is the revised version of the, the cowling. So this replaces the one that comes out on the on your 3 or Y. And then in the baggie, we have this piece. Um, this may or may not be needed. Again, it depends on the essentially the build quality of your, your car. Um, but if it is needed, it fits on top of the metal supporting bracket in your 3 or Y. And it just closes up the gap between um, the top of this Essentially, it fits across here and um, the bottom edge of your dash. So if your trim is a little uneven, this takes care of it. And again, we'll show you that in the video, of course. Temperature sensor. Um, so just to explain that. So in here or underneath your screen is the cabin temperature sensor. So that's what this is for. And then if you have an older Model 3 or Y, I think maybe just three, this is for the version one cabin sensor, so you get both options. And then I move some stuff aside. This is the tool kit. So spudger or trim removal tool. That's literally just to um, unpop the vent mount underneath your existing screen so you can get to the bolts to remove it. We'll obviously show you all of this during the installation video. Big ass Allen key. Um, this is for adjusting the tension uh, if you need to on this. Um, this is a little Torx screw. I think it's a T10, forgive me if I'm wrong. Um, this is for removing the, the existing screws from the back of the, the screen. Little baby screwdriver, Phillips, that's for um, installing the temperature sensor. That's what the screws are for as well. They fit in there. Um, small round key, this is for installing the bolts, which is the last thing I should have got out from the box. Just to need my spudger to get those out. So these hold, there's two of them, but they hold the screen um, to the metal prongs that come out of your dash. So these are pretty important. You wanna get this super tight. Um, you can certainly do it with this. If you have better tools, of course, like any DIY guy, you should, you should use those, but that's certainly an option too. And then a little, just a 10 inch, uh, sorry, 10 mil um, spanner or wrench, 10, 10 on this end, eight on this end. Again, you may have better equipment. If you have a socket set, I would recommend using that because you can just get more, um, more leverage on that. So that's what's in the box. Now we're gonna go into the car and do the installation. All right, we're inside the car now. So um, as mentioned before, we're gonna be installing the version two um, screen rotator. So that pivots left and right, up and down as well. But this video works for both options. So if you have version one, good for that too. So we're gonna start by removing the screen. We'll drop it down. Um, then we'll kind of undo the bolts, put everything back together again and put it back on. To start with, we need to remove the vent cover underneath, which is what holds the temperature sensor. And to do that, we're going to use the included um, spudger or trim removal tool. Just kind of really dig it in there and try and pop that open like that. All right, and you'll see there's a, this is the temperature sensor. So we want to squeeze that um, the plug going into it. If I can just find that. I don't know quite know where to squeeze. Every connector on a Tessa is different. Okay, yeah, it's a little. I'll show you this after once I've got the thing out. Just where to where to squeeze. Okay, so it's out of the way now. But you can see there's a little. Um, maybe you can get that on camera there. Just a little prong that you need to 
pull in to remove that. And it just gets that out of the way. This is a temperature sensor. So if you have the older version, um, it'll be flat. This is the version two, which I think came in around the beginning of 2019. Um, so, but we have um, mounting panels for both types. Let's just get the screwdriver. So we're going to undo this from here. All right, and then just set that side to one side for now. Okay, so now, um, now we have that off, we can get to the two bolts underneath. I'm kind of pointing them out with my fingers and I'll get them out of the way in a second. Hopefully you can see that. So to do that we need the, well to get this off we need the 10 mil socket, which I'm going to use. We do provide a 10 mil um, wrench or spanner as well in the kit, but honestly it's a little easier with one of these if you have, have one in the house. So I'm going to find turn that right away. It's just one of these on each side. We're going to reuse these, so keep that somewhere safe as well. screen loosen up. Don't worry about that, it's not going to go anywhere, but I'm just going to support it to take the strain off the, the bolt. Okay, so now the screen is going to come away. This requires a little bit of effort, but you also need to be careful because obviously you don't want to damage any of the connectors on the back of the screen. Um, so before I do this, I'm going to move a couple of cameras around and put down a towel just to have somewhere to put the screen. Okay, so as you can see, I'm kind of using, um, there's not that much cable or slack cable on the back of the screen, so I'm just using the box that came in and a couple of towels just somewhere to put the screen on that's nice and stable and we can work on it. So I'm going to just kind of gently but forcibly pull it away. That's one side. That's two sides. Let me just move this here. All right, so now there are two Torx nuts to remove just in here. We'll get a shot of that while we'll I find the Torx driver. That's this one. Let's just do it this way. This removes the factory cowl and we're going to reuse these as well so don't lose them. Okay, so now this is kind of the more most fiddly bit, it's getting this connector out. So I'm just going to move this out of the way, just hook it up there or something. Okay, so depending on the vintage of your car, you may or may not have this white retaining clip on there. So we're going to remove that first. And this is a bit of a fiddle to get off because it kind of catches on everything. Okay. And then what we're left with is this connector. So we need to be a little bit careful here. Um, the mount itself doesn't put any strain on this, this connector at all, but just getting the thing out is a little tricky. So I'm going to grab the screwdriver and then hopefully you can see there's a little retaining clip here. Let me grab a light real quick just so we can make sure we see that. 
Okay, so this is what I'm pushing in, and I'm going to put some pressure and remove the plug at the same time. So just push on that, and just kind of, again, firm pressure pops that out. If you have difficulty, um, sort of pay attention to where the join is. You can just get a little um, flat blade screwdriver between that and just get some extra leverage on it as well. So not too bad. Okay, so I'm going to move the screen out of the way. All right, so now we're going to remove the rest of this. So now we've got the screen off, we're going to go ahead and put the mount on. So um, we're going to start with the plastic cowling and just kind of uh, pull the cables through that. Like so, don't clip it in or anything because we're just sort of working around it at the moment. And the way this fits in is just like that, just slots into the two prongs. Um, doesn't go all the way in, uh, but you'll find the position using the, the factory bolts that we just removed. But unfortunately we have to do all that through here, just to add to the fun. So we're just going to drop that in there like that. I'm going to grab one of the bolts and kind of manoeuvre things around like so until we can get that one in. tightened up again using a 10 mil socket okay that's that side then we'll maneuver things around a bit more and get this other side visible It's a bit of a fiddle, but you'll find a position where you can get to the bolt like that. And then just move the bracket around like that. Okay, so that's good and tight. Let's move this back. Get the bracket squared back up again. So you can see I can move it around now. It's not easy to move, but it does move. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and um, push this all the way home. There's another black piece in the kit that looks like this. Um, if you have a wide gap at the, at the top here, and we don't, but if you do, then this just sits if I get the right way around, on top of these bolts here, and just gives you an extra platform um, for this to snap under. So if we needed it, we would have a much bigger gap under here, but obviously there isn't a gap, so uh, we don't need this piece. But depending on your car, you may be able to make use of that. So we're just gonna push this back, and this takes a little bit of manipulation, and use the trim clip as well, or sorry, the, the, the trim pry bar to um, just push this back into place. So I'm just going to have that middle one under, put this one under. Okay. That's good. We still have the two cables coming out over here. There we go. So you kind of know when it's home because everything's all squared up and it's, it's good and solid. Okay, so now we've got the cowling on. We're going to um, start on the back of the screen. So to do that, we're going to fit this piece. I've preloaded the factory screws that um, that came off earlier. Um, it just makes it easier because they kind of have to go into this little recess here. So just preload those. We're going to drop that on. And then we're going to get this connector as well. So this is all a bit awkward and we're sort of working quite close to the screen. i just put it on the right way. Oh, that'd help. So this is going to come through here. We're going to push that home. I didn't mention at the start of the video, but it probably makes sense to set the screen into screen cleaning mode so it's not accepting any inputs while you're doing that. Um, it obviously doesn't matter if you forget to do that, as I did. So that's on. I'm going to put this clip on. This goes this way around. So we're going to move that out of the way again. Slide that down over the top.
this thing is so fiddly. It actually goes that way. So now how many times I do this? I can never remember the right way. Okay, that just fits there. Now we're gonna bring this around. Like so. Find my Torx wrench. And just do these up. There's a lot going on here. Let's get this up here. These don't need to be super tight, it's just plastic on plastic. Oops. Okay, so now it's time to hook the screen onto the mount. Um, so it kind of slides at the top here. One thing to note, and this is the most frustrating part of the whole installation process, these bolts go in at this angle, so it's roughly 45, 45 degrees. Um, once you've got the screen mounted on there though, you're doing it completely blind. So it does take a bit of patience to get these things um, to bite. And you'll see that in just a moment. So we're gonna go ahead and put the screen on. And this just sort of slides over the top like that and just jimmy it into place like that. And then we're going to do the first bolt over here. I'm going to support the screen. You kind of want it um, like that. So it's, it's difficult to tell, but you'll see that when the screen's in the right position, all the plastic joints across the top here line up just right. I'm going to put that in there like that. Then we're going to do the same on the other side. Completely blind. Hold on. Get a Torx wrench. I'm going to move the box out of the way because I can't really get much leverage. Oh no, that's the, the other one. Allen key for this one. As, you, as it starts to tighten up, you'll feel the screen. Well, we did you want to get a decent turn on this so once you've got it most of the way in just put the shoulder end in just to get a bit more leverage on the allen key like that we do the same over here Oops. okay and then same thing just get the and in just to get more leverage on it. Okay, so that's the screen mounted, good and solid. Next thing we need to do is the temperature sensor, which, if you remember, looks like that. That's okay, you've got spare screws over here. So I'm going to put that there. We just need two screws for this one. Get the sensor plate so this is a second generation um, sensor so we need the bigger of the two plates but I'll show you both of them this is what they look like this is the inside view this is the outside view so if your sensor doesn't look like this then you're going to be wanting this one and it'll be a sensor that just kind of screws right down onto the top but most cars and certainly everything since middle middle of 2019 maybe early 2019 has this one so it just sits in there like that. We've got two screws, a little screwdriver. Tighten this in.
Okay. And then we want to find the temperature sense plug, which is up here. This can only go in one way, like that, and that just snaps in, like that. And then the best way to get this in there, let's move that cable out of the way, is put it in from the bottom. You'll see there's a sort of a leverage point there, and then just snap it upwards. Bit in there, oops, like so. Okay, so you can now see that it's all mounted. It rotates left and right, which is nice. It also rotates up and down, so you can kind of um, really kind of just position it to the driver if you choose to. It's not contacting the back of the dash or anything like that. Um, if when you're done, you'll find the screen is unresponsive. This is just because we're unplugging it and plugging it while the car was powered up. So you just need to do a full reset of that, which is just pressing and holding the two buttons on the steering wheel and the brake. And then just waiting. Yeah. This takes a, a long minute sometimes, but the screen will go black shortly and then um, the logo up here. Okay. Okay, take your fingers off. There we go. All right, so just pause the podcast. There. Okay, so now everything's back to normal. The screen's still moving around and all the touch functionality is back. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the installation video. Great job, Peter. Yeah. <laughs>